<clears throat> Happy Sunday. It is Sunday, isn't it? Um, I'm very excited. I haven't done a live in a little while, and I'm really excited to share this story. It's not a common one um, because the healing was really rapid uh, in my experience. So I'm very excited to share this story. As you all know, my or some of you know that my healing of my autoimmune disorder Crohn's took a while. It took me a year and a half. And then it really felt me uh, about two years to feel really just normal, which I never thought I was going to feel again, by the way. So um, I healed myself from Crohn's disease um, and I live my remission every day, meaning I take care of myself. I didn't go into remission and then go back to my normal lifestyle before Crohn's, which was party, hardy, rock and roll, drink a fifth, smoke a bowl. I now take care of myself because I understand that um, once there is a health issue or imbalance that I could never live the same again because I now have to live in respect of my autoimmune ability, my body's ability to go into that inflammatory state. So um, it's not do a protocol, get better, and then go back to your normal ways, which I think we all kind of secretly wish that were the truth or the case. It's more like regain your health and then take care of your health and have incredible reverence for your health because anybody who has is doing this protocol is doing it because it's kind of a last ditch effort. Um, so you know the value of health and vitality and um, taking care of your beautiful Ferrari, um, because that's what it is. It's your living, breathing Ferrari, and you would never put junk in it. You would never put sugar in the tank, right, of your beautiful, incredible Ferrari. So um, that's how I view my body, is like a Ferrari. And if I take care of it, it'll hum along really nicely. And if it doesn't, uh, if I don't take care of it, it's gonna go in the shop and have really expensive repairs. So um, I'm really excited to see you guys. Thank you for showing up on an early Sunday. Let's see. And then the other thing I wanted to say is that uh, I used this protocol, a version of the bean protocol to put my autoimmune disorder into remission and keep it there. Um, and I also work with people to help balance their hormones and uh, f chronic fatigue. Um, there's a lot, there's been a lot of different um, versions of the protocol applied to various uh, human ailments and imbalances. And it's wonderful to see it work on so many different levels. It's kind of profound actually. I think mostly because um, the basis of the protocol is just supporting human health and cellular um, wellness, basically. So, the beans are the uh, are the uh, the surprise ingredient. Yeah. So, um, to lose weight, I'm actually going to do a live um soon to talk about how to lose weight on the bean protocol because some people do gain weight on it some people lose weight i have quite a few clients who are upset because they've lost too much weight and i have some clients who are upset because they've gained some weight so it's definitely um it's a sticking point but you know for the most part i would say um there is strategies to lose weight on the bean protocol and, um, but more importantly, if you're coming with a slew of health imbalances, I would say letting go of the weight component, whether it's losing too much or gaining some, because on the path for vitality, I think, um, and rebalancing your body, you have to let go of a certain amount of vanity. I mean, I literally looked like Gollum. I was so skinny and so emaciated. Um, because uh, it is inflammatory. High, somebody asked if why no high intensity workouts. It's because it's inflammatory and most people's imbalances are um, you know, compounded by inflammatory things like stress and hardcore workouts. 
Um, so if you have a hormonal imbalance, then, then you're doing a hardcore workout, you know, because everybody reads, oh, working out is so good for you. And so I'm going to feel better. And then you feel better for like 20 minutes and then you crash really hard because your body is just like, I can't heal your body and do this in high intensity workout at the same time. So um, you can't do everything at once. You just can't. Um, and I think healing the body wins every single time. So if you are working on your balance of rebalancing your body, then you really want to do low grade or moderate workouts, um, stretching, yin yoga, things that are really um, low grade and, in and intentional. And to be honest, I have a lot of clients who do these high hardcore workouts and they're like, I can't lose weight no matter what I do. And the harder I work out, the more weight I gain. It's inflammation. So you really want to drop down those workouts. You want to do walks. You want to do things that are putting your body into a parasympathetic state instead of a uh, fight or flight state. The state of fight or flight isn't one that your body wants to do anything to save your life. So if you're doing a high intensity workout and trying to heal your body, you're kind of going in two different directions. All right, let's see if I see my client. Where are you? Where are you? Hey guys, nice to see everybody on an early Sunday. If you have any other questions, throw them at me while we wait. Happy to answer any of them. And I will do a live that talks about strategies for losing weight on the protocol. I hate to focus on weight loss for the most part. Um, there you are. I think you have to ask to join. Um, the I see you. Um, I think you have to ask to join my live. So see if you see a little invite. God, I'm so horrible at these things. I'm surprised that anybody shows up for it. It's like a train wreck over here. <laughs> um, supplements, why are supplements so bad? They are not so bad. I do not demonize, me personally, I do not demonize uh, supplements. I just think that they are misused and I think that they are used as a crutch. And I think that, <laughs> I know, um, I think that it's this idea that you can supplement, supplement your way out of bad health and you just can't. Um, and some of them actually can be inflammatory because they are missing a lot of cofactors. So your body is interacting with them very differently than it would food. But I also see the value of them. So I'm not a black or white person. I just know that for the most part, most of my clients have been on a million supplements from their functional medicine doctors and they feel no better. So I think there's something to that. If you don't feel better, um, then yeah, there we go. All right, let's see. Yay, I'm so excited for you guys to hear this story. And we get to meet for the first time. Hello. Hi, sorry, I'm not the tech savvy on Instagram. Me neither, and I just <laughs> talked way too much. <laughs> no, no, it was good. You look like you're in a beautiful location and it's so nice to meet you. Yeah, I am at a lake. I, I live in Berlin, so I have the baby and the puppy. Um, so we'll see how long I can chat before things turn chaotic. Yes, we will. So wait, where are you right now? Um, I'm at a lake um, in Berlin with our new golden doodle puppy, Golda, uh, and, and our baby. So yeah, it's just 20 minutes from our house. All right. Well, let's hop right into this. How long have you been doing the bean protocol, or in your case, the white diet? Um, well, I've been, so I started, of course, with the white diet. I think I was actually only on that for seven days, and then I was back on it um, probably two months later. But I've been doing the work since early February, I would say, something maybe actually right around the 14th of February. Okay, and what was the state of your health when you and I started working together? Oh, it was horrible. It was the worst it had ever been. So I've had colitis for six years. Um, most of the time it's been under control. I had I was pregnant and was totally in remission when I was pregnant. And then about five months post-pregnancy, I had the worst colitis flare-up of my life, um, having to use the bathroom like 25 times a day, lots of blood, couldn't really keep anything down, was starting to lose a lot of weight. Um, I immediately got on steroids because I, I couldn't control it with the other medicine they gave me so I was on prednisone and it wasn't working um 
I had only been on prednisone once before and I saw results within a week. And so I was horribly, horribly ill. I was actually with my family in Hawaii taking um, kind of a maternity leave and I really couldn't do anything. It was horrible. My partner had to take care of me and the baby and we almost left to go back to Germany where I have health care. Um, so it was really a last ditch effort. I also like I'm a really healthy eater. I've been a vegetarian pretty much my whole life. And so I really didn't think this was something that you could actually heal with food. Most, actually, every doctor I saw said you can't heal this with food. Um, but it was really at the point where it's like, am I going to have to get my colon out? Um, and then I, I follow Lacey and to be magnetic. And so I heard, you know, I was like, fuck it, let's, let's give it a shot. And it really took a week to start seeing results. And it took one month to have absolutely zero symptoms. I, isn't that crazy? I remember working with you. And I always get, when, when I'm working with somebody with a severe autoimmune gut reaction, I always get this pit in my stomach of like, come on body, you know, start healing, let's get you online, let's get the blood stopped. And I remember talking to you because you were in LA um, mm -hmm. on a trip before you were going back to Germany. And we started the white diet. And I just was like sending prayers all the time of like, come on, stop the bleeding, stop the bleeding, stop the bleeding. And every time I got an update from you that things were getting a little better, I was like, okay. But I think you did have like, in the time we were working together, you had a flare around one of the yeah. cycles. I talk, about, I talk about that a lot where, you know, when you are working on health imbalances, a lot of times for women, you'll flare around your cycle, whatever those symptoms are, or ovulation. So was that yeah. the experience for you? Yeah, it definitely was. I guess I, I had to actually stop breastfeeding when I had to go on the steroid again. And so my cycle was just kind of all over the place. And I was uh, feeling so positive because I had had a really good couple weeks, no blood, um, no cramping, actually no symptoms. And then right before my period, I had a flare up again. And it felt really defeating. Like that one was pretty tough to almost have to restart, go back on the white diet because I had been doing everything. I've been following it really perfectly, which is not really my personality. I, I tend to cheat. Um, so that, that was hard. <laughs> um, You're not but, alone, by the way. <laughs> I know. I know. But since then, um, I've had, I wouldn't even call it a flare up because I, I can recognize it now. Um, also, it was around my cycle and there was a ton of work stress. I own my own company. I have co-founder issues. Um, but this time around, I was able to catch it and I just up the beans. Whenever I feel something coming on, I just keep a pot of lentils on the stove and I really have like two full spoonfuls pretty much every time I walk into the kitchen and I work from home. So I probably end up having like 12 servings of beans um, on days I'm not feeling as great. Yeah, and it's, um, and I think the thing we talked about is like, you know, this diet isn't a miracle cure for autoimmune. It's like, you've got to always do the work and, and really um, respect your body's natural inclination towards inflammation. I think for yeah. me, like a year and a half out when I started getting, um, you know, maybe two out of my remission stage where I started to explore a little bit. Um, it took me a while to even add in any alcohol just because of how inflammatory sugar is for autoimmune. And um, I wanted to have a cycle without even having a minor flare before I started tinkering with the protocol. Um, because for women, like that's a very inflammatory time for our bodies and um, the hormonal shifts that we go through. So I love that you are um, course correcting when you feel your body <clears throat> responding hormonally. Absolutely. I do because I know it's not a miracle cure. I know I followed it really well, but like it actually was a miracle for me. I was really at the point where even with like hardcore medical intervention, like I was on steroids for something like eight weeks. I didn't know. I thought I was going to have to go on immune suppressors, which, you know, given <laughs> the state of the world right now would have just been horrible. So I actually do see the bean protocol as a miracle. Like, it, it was for me. Yeah. 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 And you and you've done it really well. Like you said, it wasn't necessarily the easiest thing in the world to do because no. it's pretty simple, you know, and I think there's a misconception that you can, you know, people can have all of their creature comforts and heal. And it's just unfortunately, it's a bummer. It's just not the case. No. The human body is especially when it gets to the point where it's expressing imbalances. It's been pushed so far that you have to overcorrect to get the results that you want. And I'm just so happy. I mean, literally, you're one of the quickest healers I have ever worked with. Like your body, just, your body, no, your body responded like it was like waiting for it. You know, yeah. like it really did. You did all the work, but your body every step of the way was just like, 
I'm ready. I'm ready. I'm ready. Yep. Um, it was exactly what I needed. Yeah. So I'm really excited for you. And I had a question for you. What was it going to be? Like you didn't work out. You were, you really yeah. expected the process. Yeah. I was also, I mean that, I think if I would have started this before I was so, so sick, I don't know if I would have followed that. I probably would have still worked out, but like I was just, my body was destroyed. Like I had absolutely no energy. Also, I wasn't sleeping great because we have a baby. Um, so yeah, I didn't work out. I have a reformer machine at home. So once I got back to Germany, so a month into it, I would do like really, really like super low resistance, like mostly stretching. And then I actually just started working out again. So really I took from, I mean, realistically January until last week off of working out. And now I'm slowly incorporating some hit workouts in. I did two this week, but like I'm, I'm watching wow. it, I'm monitoring it. And good. right now it feels really good, but I've also upped the beans just in case. Smart, but it does smart. feel nice Keep to be back. Simple, up the beans. And then yeah. how's your energy these days? How are you feeling overall? Okay. Well, you can't ask. I have a, I have a baby who's teething and then I got a puppy um, who wakes up at four in the mornings. <laughs> <laughs> so my energy is okay, the best. <laughs> yeah, no, it's, of happy. yeah, I, I'm feeling, I'm feeling just a lot better because also just when you're that ill and having to plan your day around being that ill, like I couldn't, I would have to wake up like two hours before my calls just to be in the bathroom for two hours before I could like get any work done. And that the amount of stress that that caused, like, not having that anxiety, just waking up and feeling good in the morning and able to do, you know, whatever I want without having to plan around the colitis. It's like, it's, it's, it's changed my life. So are you down to like one or two bowel, normal bowel movements a day now? Yep. Exactly. In the morning. Like, I know it's amazing. It really is. Yeah. It's, it's so nice to see you. It's, I, I talk about this all the time because I don't do Zoom calls with people. I just don't feel like it's necessary to no, talk to not. people who are struggling with their health and like looking at them in the eye while they're telling me about their bowel movements or whatever. I wouldn't have, happening. yeah, I wouldn't have been yeah. able to, like, I just wouldn't have signed up for it. <laughs> no. No. So yeah, I guess this is the first time that we're talking. And I do, I know I told you this, but I think it's important for everyone on the, um, on the Instagram live is I actually did have a, a colonoscopy scheduled. So I'd been on the bean protocol for four months and they, my doctor said it was, it was actually a miracle that I'm in remission and I have very, very minor inflammation now, but compared to what that was even two years ago when I thought I was doing like really good with colitis, it's just, it's yeah, it, it's changed so significantly. Well, nice work on healing you. your body. You did all the work. I was just there to support you kind of ride the emotional waves of setbacks and moving forward. And, you know, you really rock star status over there. So yeah, but that was more important than I thought it was, to be honest with you, because, you know, I'm like, I think I'm ambitious. I felt like I could read a book and like do the bean protocol myself. I didn't think I needed emotional support. But after I had that one flare up when I was doing so good, like, I don't think if if I had have been working with you, I don't know if I would have continued. I would have been like, oh, no, this is just actually hormones. This isn't related to food. So, I, yeah, I think it's if people can actually sign up for the one on ones with you, like, that really made a difference uh, in my thank story. You. Thank you. Oh, thank you. <laughs> I love well. Yeah, I love what I do. And I, I every time somebody signs up to work personally with me, I feel honored to support their journey. And, you know, because I know it's I know none of this is easy. And I know none of it makes sense in a world that demonizes uh, beans and leptins. And here I am telling somebody who is bleeding that they're going to be eating beans. And, you know, most people have the same response I did, which is I'm desperate enough to do it. Okay. Yeah. Sign yeah why I call it the desperation diet. So. It absolutely is. It's yeah. also really nice to have someone, I mean, inflammatory bowel diseases are like horribly embarrassing. Like I don't even really tell my partner unless it's like dire, you know, and so to just have another person who had had that before. So that it takes a lot of like the embarrassment and shame around was really helpful too. Cause I, I'm sure I know people who have other diseases like that, but like, it's not something that I mentioned by any means. So it also felt really isolating. Yeah, and there's um, not, I mean, it, to me, it is actually healing to be able to say, oh, yeah, look at my progress. I'm down from 20 bowel movements a day to five to three yeah. to two. And, you know, we're raised to never talk about our bowel movements. And, you know, little kids are like giggle and talk about poo. And But we're not, as adults, mm -hmm. we're not really supposed to. And 
Um, I always joke that, you know, if I ever lose my phone, I feel sorry for the person who finds it because it's all, <laughs> it's all I talk about. Is, yeah. You know, it's like, how many bowel movements a day? Was it solid? How's it feel? Do you have any cramping? Do you have any bloating? You know? And yeah. And in the it. beginning, that was hard, but then yeah. you get used to it. And it's just, you know, it is what it is. And that's how you really measure progress or, you know, that's at least how I did. So yeah. Yeah. yeah it got easier over time for sure. Yeah, I know it is really funny. Like I, I kind of try to break the ice immediately. Like, okay, let's just talk about poo here, because this is, you know, <laughs> some people read tea leaves. I read, I read poo. So yeah. Um, <laughs> well, I am so happy that you are doing so incredibly well, and thank you for taking some time out of your day to share your story. Because I do think that other people hearing real, you know, my story, I think people tend to go, oh well, you know, that's you. And, um, and then you made it into a career. So no, of course, you love the Bean Protocol, but I turned it into a career because of what the Bean Protocol did for me. And I felt compelled to support other people to heal naturally, if they had the desire. So, you know, but I feel like people put me in a different category of like, oh, well, that's you. But hearing other people, yeah. real people's story who didn't necessarily you know, be like, oh, I didn't, tr I tried the medical thing. I mean, you know, like I didn't. So people are like, oh, well, you didn't, you know? Yeah. Um, but you did. And, and then you came to the desperation diet, aka the bean protocol. Um, and you have full remission from a colonoscopy. So it's not like we're even talking about fantasy world here. We're talking about reality. Um, yeah, I couldn't believe it. Yeah, but that happened yeah. so fast. And I wish I would have found because I mean, I do remember seeing your book when I went through I've had two bad flare ups with Clytus. And I remember seeing your book during or maybe it was right after my first horrible flare up. But like my steroids were working. So I was back on track. And I just wish I would have found you earlier. And I think maybe if I would have seen some testimonials or Instagram live, I would have like stuck with it. Like I just saw like, Oh, here's a book on Amazon. Um, you know, but I just wonder like, would I even have had that second flare up? Could I have still been breastfeeding if I would have found this um, this earlier? That said, I'm grateful I found it when I did. But, you know, even though it's embarrassing, I like, definitely have never talked about my inflammatory bowel disease on <laughs> on any kind of social media platform. Like, if it helps anyone, like, fuck, I wish I would have found this earlier. Awesome. Yeah, and I understand how you feel. Like, I've gotten more and more comfortable over the years being like, yeah, I used to shit my pants. <laughs> yeah. yeah, seriously. <laughs> <laughs> I yeah that happens you know or that kind of happens and you're you never want to talk about all of the horrible things that happen when you have a bowel disease um, yeah and and to know like the thing that I guess um I want everybody to know is like you know that you have a base camp you have a place to go back to you know simplicity will always bring you back the less you can spend a life flaring the the more you the more healing and resilient you are so everything about an autoimmune disorder is you want to live a life that's anti-inflammatory so that you mm -hmm. never incite a flare but what always brought me comfort is knowing that if life got super stressful and i felt my self getting inflamed that i knew i could always go back to be the beginning you know absolutely and to me that's incredibly empowering knowing as a person who's been diagnosed with Crohn's that I have a base camp, I have a place to return mm -hmm. to and to take care of myself. So it's, yeah, because it's you nice. often don't know what to do, you know, especially like for me, I thought, oh, I'm eating so healthy. How is this happening? Um, yeah. But yeah, to know the steps and just like always have that in my back pocket has made a made a significant it feels less scary, I think. Yeah. 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 Awesome. Well, thank you so much. Thank you. I appreciate you so much. And uh, oh my so God, I appreciate you so much. Um, and anyone on the Instagram live, if they have any questions, I'm happy to answer them. And also for the woman who asked about weight loss, I lost 10 pounds on this diet. Um, and I was actually worried about it because I was, you know, I wasn't really working out. because like, oh, I feel like I'm eating much more. But for my body, this actually felt really good in more ways than one. Yeah. And that's amazing, too, by the way. Um, because a lot of times with um, autoimmune, a lot of the weight that we'll carry, not in my case, because I was just straight up golem in the house, mm -hmm. but um, a lot of, especially when you're doing um, prednisone or anything like that, yeah, a lot of the weight you'll carry will be puffy. Like you don't look mm -hmm. puffy to me, you know, like the weight will be puffy. Um, and, um, and so 
that weight you can lose pretty quickly. When I started the white diet, I was only in the 90 pound range. So every time I lost weight, I was just like, you know, just yeah. like, just like scary. that. Yeah, super scary. So um, yeah, you can definitely lose weight. And it's interesting because a lot of times not working out is what will be one of the parts of losing weight because your body is so used to being in fight or flight that it will hold on to weight because people will work out harder and eat less when they are trying to lose weight out of desperation. And it's almost like the opposite. When you put your body into a state of parasympathetic, your body can actually begin to release and let go. Mm -hmm. Um, so part of it, I think was the fact that you were just resting and as much as you could with a baby, you know, um, and, um, and eating well. So, yeah. Awesome. Well, have awesome. a wonderful day at the lake with your baby and your puppy. And your <laughs> thank you. And thank you. And as always, I'm always here for you anytime, anywhere, anyhow. Awesome. I appreciate it. All right. Thanks, Unique. Bye. Thank you.